Okay, I'd like to um, welcome you all to the Development Review Board for the City of Montpelier on August 19th. Um, we are going to have Mike Miller uh, review reviews of remote meeting procedures, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so for those... There we go. For those viewing this meeting via ORCA, uh, you can participate in tonight's meeting via the Zoom platform through either the video or telephone access options. To join the full video options, type this link that is right here in green into your browser. And alternatively, you can call this phone number and when prompted, put in the meeting ID, which is the highlighted. Uh, either way, I will get a notice and I will let you into the meeting. If there are any problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mmiller at montpelier-vt.org, and I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. For those attending via Zoom, turning your video, your video on is optional. For everyone else attending, please keep your microphone on mute, and when you're not, when you're not speaking, to reduce background noise. If you're on the phone, use star six to mute or unmute. The Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. For those speaking on the phone, you can press star nine to do so or state your name if you're unmuted and wait until the chair has recognized you. Once the chair has recognized someone to participate, please make sure to provide your full name and address for the record. Continuing the meeting if necessary, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. And I will now hand this back to the chair. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? I get a motion to approve. Motion to approve the agenda. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we have three applications tonight. Um, all look like they're very thorough, which is great. Um, looks like we have some interested people, which is also awesome. Um, uh, I would ask that um, remember that keeping your uh, comments concise and um, civility is a big thing here. So just everybody keeping the tone healthy is nice. Um, the other thing is if you're going to speak, um, please come up to the podium. That way um, it can go onto the recording and everybody can hear you and we don't kind of listen in. It also gives us a way to organize that. Um, our first applicant tonight is uh, Isaac Lawrence. Do you want to come up to the table? Yeah, that's great. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, introduction board members. I always know who you are. This is our vice chair. I'm Rob Goodwin, vice chair. Sharon Allen, chair. Mike Miller, staff. Captain Burgess, board member. Joe Kiernan, board member. Alex? Um, we can't hear you. You're muted still. Alex Halas, board member. Great. Thank you. Y'all down there. Okay. Um, Mike, do you want to give us just a very short summary paragraph of uh, what this project is, or would you like me to do that? I will let anyone who has some idea, I, okay. I'm covering for Meredith today for anyone right, uh, who doesn't sure. know. So uh, I don't have any background on any of these projects. So Okay. So my understanding of this application is that it is the final review of a two parcel subdivision located at 5585 Elm Street. Um, they came before us, I understand, in December of 23 uh, for sketch plan approval. Um, and I guess, um, Mike, are you able to pull things up on the screen? <laughs> Don't want to throw you right into the fire here, but um, I, maybe you could just, um, Isaac, you could just give us a brief description of what the application is. Sure. And then we can kind of go through it. Um, so the application is for um, a two lot subdivision, so dividing one existing lot into two. Um, it's currently two, the full lot is 2.18 acres, I think, is what the survey said. It originally, we've been told 2.3, but, um, and we would, 
um, divide more or less down the middle in a line essentially um, perpendicular to 585, or sorry, to Elm Street. Um, one lot uh, has all the existing structures from the property on it, and they would stay there. Um, there's a three unit apartment building, um, which is a renovated old farmhouse. There is a large barn and there is a garage. And then the other lot would, for the time being, be undeveloped. Um, the first lot, the one with all the structures on it, what we've called lot one in your uh, materials, would be approximately 1.28 acres. Lot two, the undeveloped lot, would be 0.88 acres. Um, and our plan, such as it is, um, is to eventually develop a single, um, single unit single family home that we would live in, but that's not part of this application. Let's mm -hmm. just to say our sort of- Here for subdivision approval. Yeah, we're just here for subdivision approval at this time. Okay. Um, and our, we have drawn the lines in such a way as to create um, lot two with an area where we could build easily, um, be out of the floodplain, obviously very important, be out of the river corridor, uh, be able to access city, uh, water and sewer and electricity easily. Um, and we drew the dividing line so as to not create any um, non-conformities. So I believe there is a um, compliant setback on all sides from all the existing structures on the proposed lot one. Um, and there's plenty of buildable space out of the floodplain and the river corridor on lot two that would avoid any relevant setbacks. I think that's it. Hey, that's good. So um, looking at the map that you've got here, and I, I don't know, um, other people have seen this or they want to see it. Um, that So it looks it looks like there is sort of a division where the, to the right of the center line there. Is is that where basically the river hazard and the river corridor is, is, is kind of behind that line? Um, I mean, the I'm, dark line. This is not where, I don't know if you can see this, but so you're proposing a lot division there. But yeah. This is this is where the river corridor is. Yes. And the flood that's, area. That's correct. Okay. Um, and we did include. I don't know if it's in your packet or not. Um, but the uh, da, 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 well, this is definitely in your packet. I forget if it's called the plat or the site plan, but um, on one of those you can see where the hundred year flood line is. Um. But do you have a copy of the plot handy that you can share? Uh, yeah, it. I think I just just found, found it. Found it. <laughs> Let's see, I got it on my screen, but I feel like it's helpful for yeah the video. Yes, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I believe the dark line. What does that say? Uh, that's the VA and our river corridor. Um. And then the lighter um, line next to it, mostly parallel, is the line that um, FEMA approved as part of our letter of map amendment. So right. we removed, we basically moved where FEMA said the line was because um, it's sort of very, very much did not match the topography previously. Okay. Um, so we applied for and were granted a letter of map amendment. And that's... The lines that we asked for and were granted, which more or less more or less matches, um, but is slightly less restrictive than the um, the river corridor. Great. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious how uh, accurate those lines were with the flood that we've had over the last couple of years, particularly the one two years ago. Yeah. Um, remarkably. <laughs> The dam at Wrightsville really did its job. And so this far up, um, we saw basically no flooding at all. Like we didn't even reach the hundred year flood line. And I think, you know, where they saw a lot of flooding on Elm Street, I think it was mostly back up from the main main stem of the Winooski as opposed to the North Branch, because a great deal of water accumulated behind the dam at Wrightsville and did not flow down. A little scary when for a brief moment we thought maybe the dam was failing, but no, it was functioning as it was supposed to. Great. 
other questions before we start kind of going through this? I mean, we are basically here to do um, a final plan review and approval of the determination on the request for subdivision. Um, you know, one of the big issues here is that uh, the, when you do the subdivision that you are left with a developable bull, bull lot. Um, and that seems to uh, be accurate, that there is enough room to develop the other parcel. Um, And that's I feel like that's taken care of. Uh, so, um, do other people have questions on this application? Oh, do you have a chance to review the staff report from Meredith? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Was okay. there anything that stood out to you all? No, I was just curious just to make sure that you were able to saw before we start going through it. Uh, yeah. So you're familiar with what, what she had commented on. Yes. So back to you. Okay. So uh, I feel like we dealt with the first portion of this. Um, dimensional standards and accessory structures and uses. Um, basically, what we're doing here is um, I have to make sure that they are not in the water setback, that they're not in the floodplain, that they're not in too close to the... Um, to the existing structures, too close to the front line, too close to the sideline, um, and uh, basically just a subdivision of that. So I, I think that it meets all of those categories. Um, I do see that the neighbors uh, have a concern or uh, would like to keep it to one parcel. Um, I don't think we're right at that portion of the, of the applicant. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, so this seems pretty set you know we looked at the parking considerations that's fine um both parcels have access to l street uh, and then in future you know at the future point when you go to develop that you know you'll have to answer all the questions about driveway cuts and mm -hmm. and um number of units and landscaping and that kind of thing. Um, there, There is, I know that we've looked at a couple of these other subdivisions where it goes from one lot to two lots, and we have the ability to step in with landscaping here. And I know at least on the one on Gallison Hill, we opted to just leave it to the, leave it to the neighbors to work that out instead of mandating some kind of landscaping at this point um, that they would you know, sell the lot or build the lot or whatever and work it out as it had to go at that time that that was an appropriate place for us to necessarily step in. Um, so the proposal does comply with 3503. Um, suitability of the land. Um, I guess I would maybe be interested in this point of hearing from, uh, are the neighbors here? <laughs> the neighbors are here, great. Uh, do you wanna um, just maybe come up and talk a little bit about what your concerns are? And if you could identify yourself, that would be great. Hey everybody, good evening. My name is Jill Weeks and I live at, I'm the immediate neighbor um, to this 585, I'm at 565 Elm. And I just wanted to give my enthusiastic support for this very well done application. I know when we had to file for a variance, the immediate neighbor that was most directly affected actually held the most weight in us getting the approval. So I just wanted to let you know that we do support this. I know they're working very hard and that um, and it is a lot of paperwork. Um, our property was subdivided off of this farm. So there is precedent from both our property and as you go sort of down Elm Street, we're all the same ticky tacky houses that were uh, parceled off of this in the 60s. So um, the the floodwaters, I uh, wanted to just add that the 100 year flood line was very accurate. Um, we bought our house during the flood in July. Wow. And so it was up to the line um, on that property. So I would say that is very accurate that it does stay down below what we call the berm and um, and the plants absorb that really well. Our only concern, um, which is just in line with everything Isaac and Kelly have told us, which is to build a their home there. And we would love, love to just have one home there and not another apartment building. Because we did read that it could be up to four, but I know that is not their intention at all. So just a vote of support and um, want to 
that's really all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, the density uh, numbers in that area allow for substantially more than one. Um, and uh, I, I don't feel like that uh, is something that we should be deciding at all tonight. Uh, that, that we're doing the subdivision part of it. You know, when your neighbor comes and says, I actually really want to build a, f you know, four unit triplex or what, whatever, or a duplex or something that that's the point when, when you're going to have to come and say, I did have to make in the planning. Yeah. He said that if I had any concerns, the plan would bring it up. And right. Okay. I mean, I think it's, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like it's all going to work out fine, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> Great. I just, uh, I just, like I said, I just don't think it's appropriate for us to condition the um, subdivision permit uh, with number of units that are different than the standards right now. Um, see, Alex has her hand raised too. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's hard to see up there, but it's much clearer. Alex, do you have a question? Oh. I do. Are you talking to me? Yes. Yep. Um, oh, because you uh, got it. You're looking at the screen. Um, I wanted to come back to the thing about the single family unit because it's not. I just want to be clear that it's not in our um, mandate here to say what kind of development can happen on that parcel, right? Right. Right. It's it's up to zoning. So it could be single family. It could be a duplex. It could be a single family with it accessory building unit and i just don't want any i mean good faith all around but we i just want us to be very clear about what we're allowed to say mm -hmm. about along with our approval that sounds that sounds right alex okay i could just i can just add to that that um you can restrict the amount of development during a subdivision process if there is a reason justified within the application itself so if there was for some reason the the property couldn't support more or it would be dangerous because of traffic that would be coming onto a bad intersection or if there was some other reason to go through and say we'll allow the subdivision but it can't have more than a certain amount because it's because of one of the things in the subdivision regulations that says as a condition in order to protect and meet that requirement but generally the development of the parcel is left to that second step when they come in to develop the parcel. Mm -hmm. Catherine? And also just a point on the second step too, beyond that being a second step, then there'd also be the river hazard area compliance. So, you know, right now we're talking about a uh, number of units, just thinking about the number of units for the, um, you know, as, as is typical for this uh, category of, you know, type of site, but that's another, um, would be another area of consideration at a later point in time. We did. We yes, did. I, will, I would just add that this is what the DRB has to do, but there are mechanisms outside the DRB as you two as neighbors as to how you want to specify exactly what can and cannot happen uh, with that property if you're in agreement. But that is, as I said, outside of, mm -hmm. outside of the DRB. If you're yeah. really set on this as a thing, then you could explore other options. Okay. Um, covered landscaping. So there were a couple of things that needed to be um, on the final subdivision uh, monuments and markers on the lot. Uh, utility. Uh, does there need to be shown on the? Is that something that needs to be on the? Subdivision flat itself? No. Yeah, I think yeah. I, as I recall during sketch plan, we were, you know, requiring that just you to make sure that any utilities that need to be run to the site, you know, could just come straight from the public right away and you wouldn't need to maybe run across the existing parcel so that mm -hmm. therefore an easement would need to be created in order for you to, you know, get your your sewer or your power or whatnot to your parcel. Mm -hmm. Um so if you if they are all coming from the public right away, then there's nothing that's really needed at the time of subdivision. Yeah. But um, if that's not the case, then you know you would need to show those. Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't just be coming from the right. street. Right. Um, 
back. Um, I'll use the landscaping thing, which I think is everybody pretty much in agreement with that, that we can leave the landscaping to the next step and between the neighbors. Yeah, I think leaving landscaping to the point of, you know, getting a permit for building or whatever, I get yeah. built on the parcel makes sense. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> is it Are you all right, Mike? Is it I'm leaving? Is it right? big. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> a rain stop briefly. It just crawled up the spout. Right. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, it's a This is like nope, the, just over there. There's a spider in there. This is not, not so itsy bitsy, huh? Corner right there. The boy disappeared too. Probably went into the corner. Yeah, I think he's probably gone for the evening. <laughs> Not only is he fast, he's tough. <laughs> Not that I'll be looking over my shoulder much. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, monuments and markers have to be shown on the final plat. Um, it. Is there do other board members have other questions about this application? Um, you know, I mean, we can go through each thing that Elm Street neighborhood is described as a linear residential neighborhood extending along Elm Street. Um, how much of the suitable frontage has been developed? Proposed development may feature infill housing, particularly where there is adequate depth to accommodate development behind the existing parcels, or in this case, beside the existing parcels. I mean, I think that it's a nine thousand uh, residential neighborhood, which is appropriate for infill. Um, that's good. Uh -huh. So there was some information from. Did you already do something with the river, river hazard? Uh, uh, I think I have to do a river. Did I have to do a river hazard area per, uh, application? Maybe. Yeah, I kind of feel like I. Probably um, I don't think there was much to show except that. River hazard area was present on the lot. Yeah. Um, which it is. Yep. Yeah, so generally, the requirement for river hazard and flood hazard, as it goes to subdivisions, is that there has to be has to be a buildable area. Right. So we have to have an area that's that's able to be built. If it's in the flood way or if it's in the river corridor, it can't be built. So that. Um, there has to be some portion that's out of that, which there is in this case. And then secondarily, there has to be a way of accessing it. So mm -hmm. if it happens to be that the floodway and the river corridor is in the front of the property and the developable piece is behind it, you'd have to show some um, some access to it. In this case, it's on the right, it's on the correct side. So um, adjacent to the road, so it's easy to access. But that's those are what's required in the river hazard and flood hazard. So that way we don't end up with a property that can't be developed in the right. future. Right. Right. It's perfect sense. Uh the other part of our package was um various OKs from um uh, Montpelier Department. You know, the um Montpelier PD had no problem with it. Public works was okay with it. Um I'm sure who all else they got. Commission. Yep. Uh, other questions from the board? What? So did you have a chance to review the Conservation Commission recommendations? Yeah. Um, there was established a conservation easement on subdivided parcel adjacent to easement uh, to riverfront and reduce runoff and avoid impervious surfaces. The latter, I think, certainly we will do. And at the moment, there's nothing to be done in that regard because it's all pervious, which is great. Um, uh, with regard to a conservation easement, I mean, I think that's certainly something that we could look at. I don't, um, just timing wise, I would certainly prefer that this approval not be contingent on that. And I don't, from my reading, don't feel that the regulations would support such a contingency, but I, it wouldn't affect, I mean, it's basically undevelopable anyway. Right. And for that reason, you know, I'm not, totally sure if it would be necessary sort of necessary but 
Uh, those are my thoughts. I mean, I I do certainly we support not building in the river corridor or in the floodplain for any reasons. Yeah, I agree. Yes, my, my viewpoint on the Conservation Commission's recommendations when it comes to the easement is that um seems like the zoning regulations already pretty much prohibit the development of that. Um and that although well, by the time outside the regulations, it's a great idea. I don't know that like we as a board through this process have the ability to require uh, such a thing as a conditional permit. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to, even if we did. Would there be a, this is a um, my this is a kind of question we sometimes ask Meredith whether there's any sort of precedent within a decision to state support for the concept of an easement as a. In, as very compatible with the zoning requirements for lack of development on that part of the site? So, I mean, it would be possible to put a condition on the development, but it would not be appropriate to request or require a an easement. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I wasn't stating the latter. Okay. I'm wondering whether there is a... You know, I, I think you've, you've stated that it's something that you're... Uh, you know, you, you see that it would be, uh, you know, in line with what you're looking to do. Sure. You see the purpose, the ecological value. Mm -hmm. It's compatible with the regs and that the regs are not supportive of developing that portion of the site anyway. Whether there's a way to state support for this is a concept that, you know, is aligned with um, what the regs uh, state about the use of that part of the site. I mean, it's. I think it's always good to be supportive, but I, I feel like it's that's um, sort of like outside of us a little bit. You know what I mean? To to specify that we support and you know uh, ecological respect for this area. That you know, you know what I mean. I feel like that's not quite what we're doing. I also feel like the back of that land is really undevelopable. You know, given where it is in the in the river hazard area, the river corridor, the hundred year flood line, and he's gonna have a hard time putting a tent up there. You know. So you couldn't get a building from anything. That that's what I that's what I mean. Like you just couldn't even, you know. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's like there's a coordination question, right? right? It's interesting that there's a proposal for an easement, which you know that that's additional kind of bureaucracy around right. something which uh, practically would happen anyway, right? Given that it's undevelopable, but yeah, but it's still being requested. So right. yeah. Yeah. Joe, can you speak into your? Oh, sorry. I was just saying that I think a conservation easement is probably going to be more restrictive than what we have. As far as like a building right. goes, like they may also restrict mowing and what plant types yeah, and things okay. like that. Yeah. So sometimes, right? Um, so yeah, and I also don't think it's within our purview right now. Yeah. So I guess that I mean the other question that comes to mind here is that like you know it's like we we think of permitting the subdivision for a single family home. You know, like it seems like. Inevitably, what's going to happen is we're going to have a single family home that is outside the river core, outside of this area. Um, but, you know, we think 10, 15 years down the road, you know, it's like, are we uh, not listening to the Contrification Commission because somehow there's a way to now put four units, you know, inside the river core or in near, near the river uh, versus like family home uh, in, you know, as it is, it is being proposed. Sure. Um, I think it's highly unlikely, um, but I'm just trying to play devil's advocate right. uh, towards, uh, you know, envisioning, you know, like what maybe could happen and like what would be be looking to sort of uh, clarify in a permit condition at this juncture of subdivision. Um, I don't know. Think about it. I, I don't. I don't. I think it still amounts to us doing nothing, and that the regulations yeah. speak to that not happening. Um, but I don't know. Just want to yeah. add that to the discussion. Anybody else with any other thing? No. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Um, motion. Uh, motion to approve a two-parcel subdivision of 585 Elm Street as presented in application Z-2024-0061 and supporting and supplemental materials subject to the following conditions of approval. One, 
Within 180 days of this, this decision, applicants shall record the final survey plat in the Montpelier Land Records Office per the procedures detailed in Section 4405 of the Zoning Regulations, including the locations of all applicable survey rods and markers. Second that, Joe. Thank you. All right, let's do a roll call on it here, Rob. Yes, for Rob. Go. Yes. Catherine? I do. I've been, I've got a question back, and I'm sorry, I was not. Oh, okay. I didn't jump in earlier. Okay, sure. I think we had a statement of support and intentionality around avoiding impervious surfaces, which is, again, mm -hmm. I think future development yeah. review process would lead to adherence to that as well. But just, I wanted to hear, yeah, your opinion, Sharon, or others on the board of whether there would be any further conditions around that on here that are appropriate. I, 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 I think that that really comes with when they propose development on there. I mean, that's a definitely a, a, a portion of what is part of that permit. You know, that when you go to build a house or a triplex or whatever you're going to build, there's definitely a yeah, no, we all are aware yeah. of that. I'm more thinking back to Rob's point. No, about I, how... I, I think it's a valid point. I, 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 um, yeah, I mean, obviously moving back this meeting to discussion on the motion. Yeah, yeah. apologize. Yeah. I should have. No, that's quite all right. Quite right. Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I'd love to discuss like with everyone here about, you know, the idea of a condition on not putting impervious within the um, the, the the river portal. I'm just throwing that out there as for to, for us to talk about something concrete. Uh, concrete. I, I think that <laughs> sure. Nice. That's good. Uh, because I think that's very relevant. I do. I think it's different than development. I think that that's a yeah. Thoughts? I don't. Uh, I can't remember. Is parking permitted in the river corridor, or is it allowable? I have to see. Yes. 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 It is. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's one of the few things that's allowable if you buy back FEMA housing, right? You can't develop it anymore, but you can use it for parking. Okay. Um, I guess I guess we have to point to like what 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 section of our regulations like <laughs> right. our authority yeah. on being able to you know do anything here. So I'm into look looking into it. Um, Where Meredith provide provide a citation here. Uh, not on the impervious surfaces, I do not believe. Conservation Commission. From the from the other um cases before us tonight, there are regulations about percentage of lots that have to be that are permit permitted to be impervious. Right, but those are those are different applications, and and they're at different stages than this is. Right, but that's only germane to the fact that this question is really about the second part of the process, not about the subdivision. Yeah, yeah. And I'll also note too, just even when the landscaping was raised earlier in the context of that recent precedent, that was really around screening, you know, yeah. screening and kind of neighborhood interface yeah. versus. Uh, Flood preparedness. Right. So, and the impervious cover requirements can change over time, which is usually why you don't condition it on something that's in the zoning itself, mm -hmm. because then you'll end up with conflict. All, all the other properties. You're supposed to treat like like properties similarly. So, if everybody on the street all has a sixty percent requirement except this property that has a 50% requirement or an 80% requirement because it was set as a condition of the approval, it it should just be treated like all the other properties on the street for the amount of impervious cover. And that's why usually we'll, we would handle that step, the amount of impervious Thanks. in the next step when we get to develop. I haven't seen the spider back there. I've looked a couple of times. I just want you to know. And yeah. Rob, I admit you're probably already on this, but your staff report cites 3509 as a potential area. Almost there.
so there's a, uh, the city's water setback and riparian buffer re regulations in 3005 and the storm under provision 3009 also are in effect. So that's another layer of protection. I guess I, I guess I still just feel like that question should be with the next application. You know that they can't do anything on it until <laughs> until they come back. You know, I mean, I guess they could set up a parking lot, but yeah. So it's like thirty five oh nine a one is what like basically says it's required that conservation commission comment yeah. on an applic subdivision that's got lands within the river corridor. So did you want to modify the motion? Well, so Catherine, do you have do you have thirty five oh nine up or are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at I'm thirty five oh nine on the staff report. I need okay. to go on the phone for the actual. Well, I guess what's here is that like so thirty five oh nine a two. I can read it. Um, right. You know, it's like so. A one basically says it goes to the conservation conservation commission for the review. Yeah. And A two basically says, uh, well, I'll, I'll just read it. Where the proposed development shall disturb or otherwise impact a natural resource area on the Montpelier natural resource inventory map, applicant shall submit a professionally prepared natural resource assessment. The assessment shall identify potential impacts of the proposed development on the natural resource areas within the adjacent. Uh, within or adjacent to the proposed site, the mitigating methods for um, each. Well, I mean, I guess I would say that the river corridor basically is a natural resource. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would take this is that like, you know, if there were to be proposed development, which there is not now yeah. based on the subdivision within the river corridor, they would need to follow that provision. I, wouldn't that come into play when they came in for their next permit? Right. Is that the conservation commission is going to be involved there as well? No, I mean, that that totally makes sense to me. I think this just recall, um, and for everyone here, this is one of our first applications that has yeah. has dealt with this in some time. And you, you also just think, you know, it's the, the public record when people are right. reviewing these mm -hmm. decisions. There's no, you know, I think, what did we, we did sort of flood disclosure light around something, around yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. a couple applications recently, yeah. where it was just making sure all that information was in the public domain with, the decision yeah so i'm just thinking if there's something similar that we could do here that acknowledges that like the board recognizes that at further points in the process if you know when a development decision is made you know the recommendations from the conservation commission um are you know are important are aligned oh, with I, what's going on here i think it's important I, I think reading this it's like i think our conditions aren't aren't us inventing new things our conditions are Drawing attention to like yeah, what's important parts of the regulations to make sure already that they're all going exists. through. Yeah. I guess I would be okay with saying that you know, hey. development within the river corridor, you know, we point to this this provision. I guess I feel like they're going to have to deal with this provision, well, think, and so it's me. I feel like you're saying so. Make sure when you review this application, when the next step comes in, that you follow the regulations. I mean, because they're because they're there for the next step, you know. No, I think I think they are. I think <laughs> I think that there is, but 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 I think what we're removing is the discretion. You know, it's like I read this clearly as like uh, the river corridor is a is a natural it's a natural resource, right? And that any development near, near that requires assessment. Well, it doesn't say in this provision that the river corridor is a natural. You know, resource. Even though, in the lens of I think of this application, we are, I mean, maybe we all agree, viewing it as that. I so I think that this would clear. I don't know, to me, it just clarifies that like we're we're spelling out the process on this specific parcel as to like how what what other provisions so we're you, relying upon to uh, you know control further development to make sure it does what we're all anticipating. Yeah. So how would you phrase that? Like that the um that future development of that subdivision 
um, should pay particular attention to natural resources or, you know, I mean, where I think I would reference reference, uh, you know, 3509A2. Um, Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Mike. Where's where's the where's this property? Uh, uh, on Elm, it's on Elm Street here. So I'm on Elm Street. I passed the, pass the meadow. It's two two lots from the pool. It's the second lot south of the pool. All right. So, so this this looks like the parcel, and it's so you can't really see. It doesn't. It's not easy to see. But one of the boundaries is that stream. This stream here. I think so. Just looking at it on the right section there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's that lot, that yeah, little that larger lot to the south of the stream. Yeah. Below the stream. Oh, this, yeah. this yeah. one yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and the reason why I'm pointing this one out and I can zoom in now that I know. It'll let me. Oh, that's up and down. Um so the the requirement is that it is impacts natural resource areas identified on the Montpelier Natural Resource Inventory Map. This is the Montpelier Natural Resource Inventory Map. So we are looking at only the water setback. We aren't looking at the wetlands. Um, we aren't, or, or, or there are no wetlands. Uh, we aren't looking at any river corridors. Right. We aren't looking at floodplains. Sure. So, um, the only thing we're looking at is any impacts that this subdivision would have or the development of these parcels would have on the, on the water setback, which is probably 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So just, just so we're all aware, and I think Meredith pointed that out in her report that there was, um, yeah, there's the stream, um, but that's that's the extent of the natural resource inventories that we are trying to determine whether right. they would be impacted by the subdivision. So that makes that, that makes sense. So there's a lot less. Had it been on the other side, you can see on the other side, we've got all kinds of things. Going we've on. got all sorts of things. We've got wetlands. Uh, we've got vernal pools on the on the circle. We've got some type of potential rare habitats on the other side of the river. Um, I don't have the legend in front of me because I'm just zoomed in on a PDF map. So, um, so that just to, so we, we kind of keep our frame of conversation. Really, it's just down to that water setback area that is technically within that right provision of the regulations. Sure. Yep. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think Alex had her hand raised. Alex, I do. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with those who are suggesting that this really is for the next stage, for the development of the parcel stage. And I'm not comfortable with putting more layers on an approval that seems to me to be pretty straightforward, um, given the fact that all the things we're talking about will come into play when actual development happens, when there's an application for actual development. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree. I appreciate you humoring the conversation. I think it's important that we have the discussion. But Always. Ultimately, uh, I think the motion as stated, I'm okay with. Uh, Catherine, maybe you. And do we have uh, more discussion that we'd like to have? Yeah, I'm thinking I should have come more prepared on wording here too. And I generally further I agree with this all in, on, you know, in right. overall purpose. I think for me, the issue is if the, the headline is, uh, you know, proceed, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, is, Anyway, I'm just trying to think about whether, uh, yeah, I know I recognize if I don't have a condition that's worded appropriately that I can pitch, we we don't really have anything. So, okay. all right. Uh, shall I call the vote? Yeah. Rob? Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. Yes. That's good. Let me look at this for a little bit more. I'll go last. I know okay. where, where everybody else is. Alex? Going. Yes. I also vote yes. Yeah, well, I'll go ahead and vote yes. I think, you know, the regs are strong for what happens at the next point in the process. They and are. I agree that this is our, you know, we have our role in the process. And then there's a, there's a bunch of other people who have their imprints on this. Okay. That is unanimously passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, okay.
Good conversation. Totally good. No. Okay, that stack of paper. No way. All right. So next up, we have the Vermont College of Fine Arts. I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. Are we? Oh, no. We'll decide. Yeah. Is this something we need all? We're fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, Vermont College of Fine Arts. So, um, if you would like to give us a brief description of what your uh, application is looking for, this is sketch plan review of a two parcel subdivision. Uh, at 36 College Street involving the College Hall and the College Green, I believe. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, the CFA plans to sell College Hall to Greenway. So um, this would be the sixth building uh, that they plan to purchase. Um, it very much fits into their sort of long-term plans um, with the startup of their new institute and likely college programming in the next year or two. Um, I would say that um, it the opportunity came along a little sooner than they were anticipating, um, even though it really does fit into their overall vision. And so our two organizations um, had conversations about how we could make this work. Um, and so the creative solution that we came up with was the idea to subdivide the parcel into two um, pieces uh, so that the green, essentially the soccer field area of the green. And the walkways? Uh, most of, some, some of the of walkways. Them. The main walkway that cuts it in half, it's sort of the portion from there all the way to East State Street. So yep. really the soccer field area. Yeah is would be one uh, parcel that part of the green is the area that the condo association already has a recreation easement on um and so this subdivision allows that piece of the property to continue to be used as it is right now and has been for year and years and years as a sort of public uh, park, if you will. Um, the Onion River Soccer Club uses it as their one of their soccer fields in the springtime, the neighbors and, you know, really all of the community uses it as a public park. So that would be one parcel. And then the other parcel would be the building um, that College Hall sits on. And so that still leaves quite a bit of a front yard where the fountain is, that would all remain sort it's of the- hall college hall parcel um and what it does is it gives us a vehicle to create a financing structure that works because bcfa would do seller financing on the green and then the other section um the greenway could go get traditional financing for um, and then have the current tenants continue with the uses that are in the building uh, VCFA plans to lease space back in the building. Uh, we're keeping our administrative headquarters here. Um, and so it's sort of an elegant solution um, on multiple levels for both organizations. Um, one thing, I just happened to look at the uh, the drawings here. There's said something in this, uh, in this one, this one. It says six parking spaces over on the on the green itself. Isn't that what this says? It says Can I take a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. I was just a little confused about that. I was like, huh. I know, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's first will be they may just be referring to the, the number, number allotted to yeah, it. I mean it says there's six parking spaces down here. I think there are another oh, six okay. over All right. on that side. I don't know why the okay. Yeah. Okay. I was we very not planning. No one is planning to put parking spaces in the middle of the I didn't group. think so, but it was like, well, I should check. Um okay. And this is just a sketch plan review. 
Uh, just the qu question is, so like the green being a public park. So but that will still be owned by the college with an easement or is the intent to convey it to the city or? The, we would be selling it to Greenway. Yeah. So, but with seller financing, and yeah. it would continue to be operated, used in the way that it that it is right now. So, longer term, perhaps, maybe. I mean, I I can't speak for Greenway in right. terms of longer term. Like, you... It was something that we thought about, and maybe if we had had more time, we would have gone the the road of you know seeing if one of the um, conservation organizations was interested in it. But that takes time. Sure. Yeah. We did not have it. So let me just clarify there that um, uh, Greenway is going to purchase the College Hall piece, right? The whole thing. Oh, the, the, oh, it's the whole all, thing. Yep, the okay. green and the building. Okay. It is something we envision happening all together with Greenway. Okay. That makes more sense to me. Um, you know, there's always that uh, pro subdivision complies with 3001 as no new uses are proposed and the existing uses are allowed. Um, and the future development of the proposed vacant parcel is only an issue uh, to the extent that it's necessary to determine that you can develop it in some way. And it already has a recreational easement on it, you said? Great. Uh -huh. I don't think that we would need, um, this is my feeling uh, only, um, and I'd like to hear other board members, uh, that we're not going to need for this final thing uh, any additional traffic information. I mean, it, it seems like it's all staying existing use. It's all it's all exactly the same. They're just changing the names, basically. Um, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to ask them to come up with traffic information for the next, for the final. Um, oh. you would want traffic information? No. Oh, okay. No, because no, nothing's changing. I mean, it, it's one of the things here that we're supposed to look at when we're doing this is in the sketch plan review, Um, you need but to have a traffic is, study is one of the things we can say, and I think we do not need to say that in this case. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, anyone else with thoughts, comments? This is similar to the one we just saw where there's just a subdivision and it's hard to rule on anything when there's no proposed development of any kind. So, do you have a sense of any additional information that they might like to see when they come back for the final subdivision? Is there additional information that anybody does want to see? I have a question. Okay. What's a recreational easement? Uh, it allows the condo association to have access uh, to the to the green for a variety of whatever they might want to do. The new school is part of that condo association, and for them, the school having access to the green for for their students. Um, sometimes they play uh, games on the green. Sometimes got it. Got it. Just, yeah. Does it absolutely prohibit development of the parcel? No, the recreation uh, easement just uh, entitles them access to a percentage of the green, that it remain green space so they can use it for recreational purposes. Is that how box? I mean, I guess, uh, you know, it's like it's, it's on this process that, you know, we, we've done applications before where we've essentially allowed the subdivision of a, of a, of a parcel that um, will never be developed, you know, like if we were to look forward and say, like, say that, uh, you know, this was only the use of this parcel was only going to be uh, for, you know, recreation use or you know, a park or whatnot. 
that like very much uh you know narrows the review at subdivision you know like we we can absolutely discount like any parking analysis or traffic analysis right. or uh utilities you know and all of you know all, all of that um i guess even though that that is maybe the, that that's the current conditions of what's going on i'm just sort of like envisioning the approval of the subdivision that we're not specifying that it's going to be that as a condition of the permit or by the type of subdivision that's being applied for. Um I, although it may seem duplicative, I, our, our review yeah. might be, be a bit different. Um I, I guess I don't understand how we would specify that. Well I, I uh, you know in terms of uh making it part of a subdivision um to I mean you're talking about a major you know uh you know, a conservation easement or um or you're turning over to public works or you know, I mean there's a bunch of different options and those are big things and need big discussions and big decisions. And that is not in the subdivision of this these two properties. You know, I don't I don't think we I I feel very uncomfortable with conditioning it oh, in this one. This is, and this is also just sketch plan. So like okay. talking <laughs> about conditions is you know it's, yeah. it's before I'm just I'm just, I think, talking about going to subdivision, the the level of review right. when it comes to looking at uh, you know community infrastructure to be sort of carving off a lot that's got public streets on all sides um, and through the, you know, if you were just, just be one lot, you know, say like, you know, right now you can put four units on one lot, you know, in Montpelier without any, you know, ec ec extra permits, just like envisioning that like, by 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 approving a subdivision, we are allowing that. Well, wouldn't it be right. Bob that they could also go and just put four units on it right now? No, I, and that's sure. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I don't. I just don't see what the, you know, where you're thinking about. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that there's any. I think issue. I think that, but I do. I think that when it comes to, uh, I think looking at you know traffic transportation, uh, you know the impact mm -hmm. on community facilities like approving that this isn't a small a small subdivision it's too it's a, it's a lot of land in a very uh sort of uh yes. pop 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 populous populous neighborhood um and that um our review would be different after sketch plan if the use were specified versus if the use were not you know we're, we're not we're not specified at the time of okay. subdivision through the through the application. But um, it wouldn't doesn't that I mean again greenways they it, it literally is like the whole thing goes from VCFA to greenway. Sure, greenway is part of the condo association that has that recreation easement. Sure. Like they have no plans to do anything different than what it currently is. Let's fast forward five years from now, maybe they have a different idea. They would have to come back right. and with all of that information, the trap if they wanted to subdivide and traffic study and all of at that point, I believe, but maybe I'm misunderstanding what it is that but I, I mean I think I think you're I think you're exactly right. And this is where it's like a gray area in our realizations. Like we're we're asked to ask these questions at the time of subdivision. And that's like always the answer. And that like, yes, like what ultimately becomes being, you know, built later, it's like they, you know, then another process, you know, you know, commences. Right. Um but I'm I don't know. I'm just asking the asking the question, I think, of uh I don't know, like. If yeah, right, no, yeah, right now it could happen, and with subdivision, it, you know, it could it could happen. But yeah, you could put, a, you could put a single family home on like all four corners of the, yeah. you know, of of the green, you know, right, yeah. you know, right now. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of sparking the conversation about, you know, the level of view that we're gonna like take, you know, during final application, um, because it's just you know to get just sketch, sketch plan and, um. I don't know. Just, just... It's asking us to to take a lot on faith, right? Sure, that sure. every that there and it, it may be that at this point there's good faith, but that land has changed hands with surprises and not surprises so many times in the last forty years or fifty years, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Whoever would have thought that the buildings would have been sold off the way they've been sold off, that, it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So to think that there might be one side of that land, that Greenway might decide that their interests would be better served by lining up, you know, four nice neo-Victorian mansions on West Street, right? And keeping the rest for, I mean, there are vested interests that would protest that, but it's still strange to, I mean, it's a subdivision that's for the convenience of a financial transaction. Yeah. And that's his only reason, right? But it leaves open the potential for developing the parcel. That, I, but, it, but that, wouldn't that potential be there regardless of the subdivision? Yes. I mean, I believe that that could happen now without the subdivision going in. Isn't right. that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For the for the most part, I mean, there are going to be obviously certain certain rules and design rules and and those those pieces that would come into play. But for I the mean, most part, yes. In some ways, does it almost constrict it some by turning it into two parcels? If you left it just as one, I'm trying to think about the math involved with the coverage and. Well, it's by percentages. So by making it basically all green, you could, in theory, have a higher, a higher percentage. Okay. But I'd actually have to run the numbers to see if like the building could be bigger because there's some green space in the other parcel as well. So. Um, and having to still keep whatever the recreation easement right. requires of it open as well. But I think it's important to evaluate the scope of what each of these meetings is for. The sketch plan meeting, in my opinion, is for the applicant to ask any questions and for sure. us to give them information. Yeah. And then the final you know, subdivision meeting is to just see if it's physically possible to subdivide. Like right. the last one, do you have access to the road, utilities, all that? Is there enough room to build a building? That's all we're worried about in that second meeting. It's the only thing, really. Yeah. yeah. So then... It would be after that when there's a major site plan, you know, a plan in place that you would go over all these questions. And, yep. you know, city government is relatively big machine, and this is just one little screw we're dealing with right now. Yep. So, yes, we do have to take something on faith that further down the road, the people in charge then, whether it's us or someone else, will do yep. what they're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, I mean, it certainly... It doesn't hurt to walk away from this meeting knowing that a conservation easement would make everyone's heart sing, you know. I mean, so that's that's also a factor too, you know. Um uh, but I, I can't see, you know, yep. putting putting any more emphasis on it than geez, that'd be nice, you know. I mean it's really yep. up to what the property owner wants to do. But hopefully it's informative that um yeah, for the point that you're at in the process that these questions were raised by the board as you think about yeah, yeah, the future path that, you know, what what you'd be putting together for the next proposal. Yeah. So. Hmm. More questions? Is there something specific that the board would be looking for in the final? That felt like a fairly open-ended, and I, I just didn't know if there was something specific. Oh, I think Rob touched on it. It's interesting to have these two... Um, the the you know the two site divisions uh, adjacent to each other today, where really all we were thinking about in that first one was the potential for one versus four units. Right. Versus here, it's a larger site, a, a site that has a lot of significance to the community as a you know gathering space and everything else. Right. So yeah, so I think it's like Alex's point that a lot of here is on uh, a lot of the statement right now is on uh, good faith. So what else? Um, yeah, what else would would you right. be able to? I mean, it's the prepare? same. It's mm -hmm. basically the same regulations that we're looking at in each case. Yeah. You know, so the amount of input we have into what they do with this subdivision. Yeah, it's a property is, owner. Is yeah. next time round, not this time. Um, I I didn't think there was anything specific that we needed that I saw in here or that I felt like we needed. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just you know the simple subsidized stuff is the you know the final survey and the full you know essentially. Almost, almost stamp plat with monuments in the ground. At the time of subdivision is the next step, um, but I don't, I don't see anything structural around the cap application. You know, I think it's, it's fine as it is. Yeah. Great. Um, do you have any other questions? I don't <laughs> think so. I don't. Okay. Are there are members of the public. I don't know. If Folks were here to speak oh, on it. Thanks. Come right uh, up. 
just give your name and address if you would. Hi, my name is Kristen Cantu and I'm with Greenway. We're at 39 College Street here in Montpelier. Um, first, I just want to say we're really thankful that BCFA has come up with this creative and, as Katie said, elegant solution to helping us purchase College Hall and the Green. We have no development plans <laughs> for the green space. You know, also as a as a neighbor to the green, I live at uh, Four Foster Street. Uh, this part of the community is really important to us, and we are really invested in it. And we want to be in conversation with the community throughout this purchase, throughout you know our growth. You know, as an organization here in Montpelier, we're really invested, and you want to keep the green space as it is. It is a really valuable and lively and fun place to be in the community. We love seeing people out there every day using it like a public park. Um, and we would be really sad to see it go in a different direction and have zero plans for that at all. So I I know going on faith yeah. <laughs> here, but um, I would just say, please reach out to us. Please reach out to me. Um, if there's anyone in the community that has any concerns, um, we see the green as a valuable resource for the current community, for our eventual students that will come and will, you know, enjoy using that space as well. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Okay. I think we're all set, Katie. Yeah. No voting tonight. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sketch plan. We like it. No okay. yeah. yeah, so I'll just mention just about the subdivision regulation. Some of the things like traffic and the parcels and those pieces, they are many times geared towards things bigger than a two-lot subdivision. That's why it kind of feels, how, how do we apply it to this? Well, it makes a difference if you had, say, building in a new road off Town Hill. Sure. That was going to have 18 lots that's going to then dump onto Town Hill. Now we can talk about traffic because right. you know there's going to be at least 18 single family homes. Maybe there's 36. Right. Maybe there's, there's, there's 50. A, there's a, a, a we may have market. to put a limit to go through and say this can get subdivided, but the subdivision can't create more than 27 units because that's the limit we're going to put on it. Parties. You know, and however you guys want to, you, the developer, want to sort that out in single family homes and duplexes, you can do that. But you can't have this many more units because so that's what when sometimes you look at these as design configuration traffic you're like this doesn't make any sense that's why these rules are there they're for the bigger subdivisions that frankly we never see but in the event we do see one we need we to have the rules them. so isabel circle isabel yeah isabel we've been through those um all right i believe you're ready ready for eight records and three you'll come up and Thanks for your patience as we worked our way through all our applications tonight. Can you, uh, this is a request for exemption to minimum spacing for a widened curb cut. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. You want to uh, just kind of, oh, yeah, I got to swear you in. That's right. Uh, can you reach your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pain and penalties of perjury? I Great. Um. And if anybody else is going to speak on this, I would also need to swear you in at that point. So, um, <laughs> perfect. Just the mic. All right. Not a common phrase. Um, so, yeah, tell me about your driveway. Really, it's about the street being so steep and the inability to park um, on the street, really. Uh, the driveway is five feet too narrow took it on being two cars side by side. And we've got um, two daughters living with us. One is attending UVM and it will need to be driving. And the, especially in the winter, that road gets plowed. And I, I think you probably know Richardson, very steep. So we, we can't really have cars on the street um, at all. So that was the reason for the application. I am not actually familiar where Richardson Street is. I know where it is. It's in my neighborhood. <laughs> Actually, I know the house. <laughs> um, it is a very steep street. Yeah. Um, and just in case you have more visitors than your new parking, assuming we approve of it, 
enables there's a large parking lot down on Terrace Street just below you. Yes, we thought that you that. might be able to negotiate. <laughs> well, and there's a lot of long. NGOs that have parking lots that they don't use at night. Uh huh. There's so much excess parking <laughs> in that little neck of the woods. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be afraid of the fact that Chapman get up in that. Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's where the parking lot is. Yes. I'm familiar with the one you're talking about. All right. So let's look at this application. Um, This... uh. So my understanding is that the regulations currently uh, run, it's 65 feet. Have I got that right? It's already non-conforming. It is. I do, real, I do realize that. Um, I guess for me, the uh, the big part of the application was that the Department of Public Works didn't have any problem with it, and they sort of seem like the driveway guys to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> they do all those things. They know how like how things are working up there. Um, so it, the existing curb cut is sixty feet from the intersection of Richardson Street and Chapman Road. The proposal would reduce that to fifty five feet. Um, okay. Corey Line has given DPW support to the widened driveway with the caveat that final design details for compliance with other Vermont transit design standards for residential driveways uh, will need to be confirmed before DPW will issue a construction access permit, right? And you're familiar with that? Okay. Non-conformity is too close to the intersection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the name of that street? I can't remember. Uh, Chapman. Chapman. Yes. Yeah, that's where it slopes most aggressively. I think it's sixty feet now. Okay. Um, there really isn't a curb cut either. There <laughs> is at the top, but it just there's no. Real curb cut. So, so, what's your plan for widening? Like, can you walk us through that process? Well, the, I think there's a photo there that shows uh, some aggregates of stone yep. that be there to support um, the culvert. No, it's not a culvert, the ditch. Yep. It's really just putting hard material on top of that oh. and widening it that part by about two or three feet. So the grading's already done. It's Pretty just much. a matter of surfacing that's there. Yeah. Got it. There's no curb that needs to be cut, really. There's no curb up there, is there? Nope. Okay. The distance is still hold, but... So you currently could be... It looks like a Bronco, yeah? Yeah. It looks like you could park there right now. I could. I anyway. could, but yeah. So this is kind of just formalizing something that basically already exists. Yeah, in a lot of I ways. think we would widen it a little bit to make it easier to put two cars side by side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And cover it with macadam or something, right? Yes, exactly. So, it could so we're back to pervious surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, now, Sharon, we dealt with a bit of these driveway things. Uh, I think in line with maybe what uh, Mike was alluding to, a lot of this also comes from um, new subdivision standards right. uh, and whatnot, and like not necessarily specific to Thank the you. configuration of existing driveways on other streets. Right. Uh, so that's kind of where I read, read it. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we're not able to get super creative and write that into the administrative rules, but uh, you know, you can't do that for everything. That takes a lot of work. So <laughs> here we are. Right. Looking at something that it's pretty, pretty straightforward, and that's—I mean—and that's why it's because it applies to larger applications. Is why it is here at the yeah. development review board. You know, that, sure. because there was was a belt circle coming in asking about curb cuts and stuff. That's that's a lot different than uh, you coming in to widen your driveway by five feet. I think the most important thing is drainage and steep slopes that public works has weighed in, and that they will continue to be involved as the specifications of how you're doing it. Uh, and so I don't know that like expertise with the board is all that relevant uh, beyond this point. <laughs> um, 
Uh, does anybody have any questions? No. The yeah, applicant has over here. So it looks fine to me. I will motion to grant the request for widening the existing curb cut by five feet as presented in the application Z2024-0077 and supporting and supplemental materials. Um, and no further, well, I do, yes, one condition. Construction of the driveway uh, changes shall not commence until the applicant has obtained the relevant construction access permit from the Department of Public Works. I will second, second. your motion. I'll we'll give it to Alex. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll call. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Yes. Alex? Yes. I also vote yes. Thank you very much for your time. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. So much recycling. All right, so we have uh, to approve the minutes from the July. Where is it? Well, it's a good thing that quorum in it because we have an election. Oh, that's right, we have elections. Okay. Well, I would uh, like to nominate uh, Rob for vice chair. I accept such nomination. <laughs> Gladly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anybody want to be chair? I would nominate chair yeah, I was for uh, chair. <laughs> uh, I accept. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that's that. Here for another year. Our next meeting is a Tuesday. Do you remember that? It's September 3rd. Mm -hmm. Um, we do need to also do the last minutes, which were from the first of July. I was not here, but um, yeah, it's a really long time ago. We we didn't summer. meet on the nineteenth of July, did we? No, that was the last meeting. The July first, August was also was scheduled not. Yeah, so that's been the last meeting. Yes, yeah, was the uh, Agua one application, the Agua application oh. on the first. Oh right. Oh, I wasn't looking for that at all. Um, have you had a chance to review the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as drafted. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, that is that. Um, is there other business we should talk about? I just want to go on record as having considered asking him to do in to do previous materials on that Richardson driveway and deciding we didn't need to add to our time. <laughs> okay, Alex, that's good to know. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thanks for helping out tonight, Mike. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm going to adjourn this meeting. A motion? I make a motion, make a motion, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, you, you make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.